Hey Internet, I'm Chaz. And I'm Dan, welcome to Wine Series Business, episode 115. Uh, we got a bunch of sample wines that we're doing on the show today. Uh, we've uh, had some people nice enough to send us some samples over the past couple months. These have been stacking up in the locker and we're hanging out for a bit tonight. So like, let's drink through some of these samples, pick out some of our favorites, and uh, put them on the show to talk about. It's a good chance, I know this stuff is in, uh, in the national market all over the place, so it's a good chance to kind of uh, calibrate yourselves to, uh, to our palates. Uh, especially those of you who are, like, aren't in the wine business or whatever, or if you're watching us from other parts of the country, you can probably see some of these around. You may have had some of these before. You can get an idea about how our opinions line up with yours. Um, That's a really good point. So we're not, about that way. Since, since these aren't people we really know personally, there's not going to be a whole lot of history about them. A little rinse. Oh, yeah. i got a little bit of red going on in that yeah. still. Um, the uh, first three wines in the lineup today are from Tapena. This is... Uh, Group that that's uh, bringing in wine from uh, from Spain. Um, some nice Spanish varieties. Uh, tasted through them. I was I was pretty happy with them. Um, and they're like a uh, marketing project is really based around you know having these these with food and having these you know as part of a social element. Um, and I was I was kind of impressed with that. They they really made the point like every communication I've received about it, like you know this is good with friends. This is good with food. This is like easy drinking to have in a social atmosphere. And uh, yeah, it's good to see that as a goal. So having. Uh, the small taste that we've had previously, I would sort of agree. So let's yeah. go ahead and check these out. Everything here is sub ten bucks to suggested retail price. Getting some good grapefruit on the nose. It reminds me of some of the, like the uh, New Zealand South Blanc, even where just that little touch of greenness or something Absolutely. there. Absolutely. It's sort of stone fruitish too, like sort of like nectarine. Um, those sort of like stone fruit flavors. Yeah, all. yeah, totally. Yeah. And unlike, right, Saw Blanche, right, that's mm -hmm. kind of what makes it stand out. That's one of the things I like about bit. Verdejo, there's that little bit of fruitiness. Yeah. It smells really nice. Lots of acidity. It hits right away, runs out on the side of the palate, um, kind of settles in back on the molars, and I dig that. The the, the grapefruit flavors are there, just, just a faint hint of them right mm -hmm. off the bat. All Overall, the flavors are all really light. Mm -hmm. He's got a nice touch to it. Easy drinking. Very, very. Maybe easy. like a little touch of something rich trying to peek through. There's not really any real feel of richness to it, but like the stone fruit you're talking about, or mm -hmm. someone else said earlier, like a little bit of strawberry, like a little underripe strawberry or something like yeah. that. A little touch of green, but a little touch of sweet. Like, uh, works well together. Right. And the feel, I mean, the intensity is all very low throughout that, and it's uh, very refreshing. It's not trying to overpower anything. I can see this, yeah. Totally pairing well with food. So, Yeah, crisp, clean, easy. Uh, 86 points for me, sub 10. Mm -hmm. I'm totally on board with it. I would go 86, 87 points as well. Totally a vibe at sub 10. Like, very easy wine that I can see anyone, just, just about anybody liking. So, right, so <laughs> next thing we got is the 2010 Rosé. We don't know what this is a Rosé of, oddly enough. But pretty, pretty... Pretty lane color, that's good. That's good. I can handle it. Right. We're rinsing, hanging out. Got some friends visiting in town. It's nice. Weekend shows are the best. We can do this. They really are. Don't gotta deal with nothing. You work tomorrow night? Uh, no, I don't. Alright. Enjoy yourself. Friday, Friday the 13th. We're recording this on Friday the 13th. I guess this is gonna be yeah, a couple yeah. weeks out by the time. Movie marathon going on, on soon. Yeah. Nice. Another nice nose. Yeah, uh, it smells this really is good. More to the strawberries again, but a nice citrus component as well. Limes, I would go with. And watermelon, just like a ripe, sure, just a ripe, uh, ripe watermelon. Makes me want to eat some watermelon. So it's got like a floral feel to it too. It's not really powerful, but there's just like a yeah. hint of some kind of flower going on. I agree with that. Nice and easy on the palate again. The watermelon, I think, even in the mouthfeel, where there's just that little touch of sweetness, just kind of like some light body, a little bit of acidity coming back in. A smack of like juicy watermelon sort of yeah. right there. Um, and some, I would say, lean more towards like raspberry fruit too, considering the tartness paired with the acidity. But, you know, just sort of juicy flavors initially, some acidity to kind of clean everything out, and it's really easy to drink and, and yeah, delicious. Yeah, really straight and to the point, right? Like, right. no crazy complexity or anything, mm -hmm. but it's clean, right? It's got some nice flavors. Really everything I hope for in a sub-$10 bottle of wine. Yep. Um, hits the spot again. Gonna bump this up to 
I'm gonna bump. I'll, I'll take. I'll take this to. I'll take to 85 points, I guess. And uh, that's exactly where I was gonna okay. sit. No, the, I mean, I feel better about the Verdejo than this. This could stand for a touch more complexity, or just yeah. you know, because it is right to the point. But it, what it does, it does well, and it's easy to drink. Yep, so. good welcome wine. People showing up, mm -hmm. crazy. Can't talk to everybody at the same time. Just have a glass of wine while you settle in. Yep, not bad. It's not bad at all. All right, so the next one we have is the uh, 2010. 2010, can't talk today, Tempranillo, so. Yeah, anchoring the lineup for Tepena. A lot of Tempranillos are, uh, we're going to make some Tempranillos really big so and powerful, but. Spain is known for it, Yeah. so. But there can be some good variety, too. That was one of the cool things on my trip to Navarra this summer, was seeing a little more range on, on Spanish Tempranillo. How do you feel about it after? Seeing the range. It's really similar in my mind to Cabernet Sauvignon, where by and large it's not one of the first grapes that I reach for, mm -hmm. but I've had fantastic examples of it, and I totally respect the grape and, and am excited to try new ones that other people recommend. How about how do you feel about it? Yeah. Yeah. Sort of sort of just average. There's definitely wines I lean to more, definitely Cabernet Sauvignon I lean to more than Tempranillo. But I've had good examples of Tempranillo from just about everywhere, so I know it can be done well. It's just, you know. I don't know the producers that do it consistently, so it's hard. That's how you get in a rut. Both of us, we're not familiar with the good producers, <laughs> yeah. so we drift to the stuff we're more comfortable with. Yep. So stuff like this is good to make us think a little harder. So good complexity is actually coming out of the nose here that I wasn't getting earlier. Like a little bit of like pork roast in with uh, kind of like some blackberries and plums and something like that. A little bit of meanness. The fruit is like brighter, brighter red. Not heavy, like it's definitely got no. some light character to it. What you get at this price point, I think, is pretty common. There's not a whole lot of extraction done, right? Like you know, yeah. but sort of juicy and inviting too on those. Yeah. Nice. Again, clean on entry, getting just a little bit of tannin settling in across the back. Tiny bit of heat, but not enough to really cause any trouble. Enough. I don't even sense any heat. Yeah. But my palate is a lot more resilient to it. It's Again, with the juiciness on the palate, like initially, like there's some ripe flavors that are fresh and delicious right there, but overall very simple again, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, like some of the some fruit flavors right there, some tannins, and tannins actually linger for a long time. But Strawberries, and I'm actually getting a little bit of like some really nice dark fruits that are showing up as the tannins settle in. Mm -hmm. The heat's pulling it all back a little for me, but it's nice to, you know, just a tiny bit of evolution, kind of keeps things interesting. A little bit of structure, you know, you know you're drinking a red wine, but it's not... Heavy by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, definitely in like a, an easier style too, like more crowd pleasing, mm -hmm. juicier fruit, easy structure. And I think it would please a lot of a, a wide range of people too. Absolutely. So, very overall, a very safe lineup for the Tepeno wines. So yeah, very safe style, very very easily accessible by just about anybody. So. And nailing it at sub ten. Yeah, right. And like you, you could do a lot worse in many many ways. It's so yeah, so that's pretty nice. Uh, moving on to wine number four. We're score it. Or, oh man, yeah. 86 points for me. Mm. 87 minus. I was yeah. kind of feeling it. That little touch of blue fruit is like right on the edge of something I'd, I'd, I'd start to get excited about even. So I, I, I dig it. Um, now we're moving on to something, something on, the, on the big end. This is uh, the, the, the odd man out here. This is something from Smoking Loon. We got some samples from them. And uh, this one stood out definitely on the bigger side. And uh, Old Vines and Vendale. Yeah, California. Oh man, I just did another big. Well, that's yeah, right. thanks, that's Dan. Right. That's fine. Dan with the big goddamn rinses. This today. is this is how I get him used to Zinfandel. He likes to he likes to hate on the grape. I don't like Zinfandel. I know you've had Zinfandel that you like. No, I've had Zinfandel I like, but it costs like seventy five dollars a bottle. So I think when you when you start to get to a certain price point, like the quality level is so high that it's almost impossible to cap it out, right? I don't know. Sounded bad. I don't know. Well, that's a, <laughs> real, real talk. Real, real talk. It's a real, <laughs> talk. real talk. I just, I just don't like Zinfandel. Huh, this is taking on even more. Is this? So these were just a little bit cool and they're warming them up a little bit. This takes on the nose is taking on even more intensity. You see, it's it's like peppery, and it's like typical of the Zinfandel fruit, like the big sort of grapey, heavy, plummy fruit. Dry cherries a little bit. I'm getting like rubber tire coming out of it. Like think of like car tires. You spent more time with car tires than I have. 
Big time. Yeah. Fresh tire. I'm not getting that so much, but yeah. yeah. But but I've heard people say that before, right? And you get asphalt a lot, so that's not a, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not a huge leap. But this isn't asphalt. This is like rubber tires. And just to me, it's like more earthy and like dried dark cherry skins and stuff like that. Um, big cherries, like big mm -hmm. peppery fruit, you know, kind of, kind of cliche for what you expect from Zinfandel, like it delivers, right? Big fruit, big punch, got some acidity settling in, very little tannic buildup, like very little tannic dryness on the back end of it, which is an interesting Virtually touch. nothing, yeah. Yeah, getting a little bit of heat, not too much, don't think, um, but just, yeah, just like big spicy fruit. Big spicy fruit is about all this is, which... You know, if that's what you're wanting at the price point, you could. It's, this is totally that, but I don't know. it's not good. It, it's the, the rubber tire thing is too is too much. I can even taste it in the palate. It's hmm. just like I don't know. And I'm and I'm still not getting that on the palate. Um, part of the reason I picked this out to go in the lineup was that I thought it was a real. Uh, it, it really like finished the evolution from like the light crisp style to something a bit bigger and heavier. Um, I think it delivers really well at the sub $10 price point, you know, with that weight, some big fruit. And it's simple, but I like the fruit flavors, I guess is what it's coming down to. Like, Chaz isn't feeling the flavors as much, but I actually am enjoying, yeah, just the way the flavors hit on the mid palate. You know, it's not too boozy, it's not awkward or anything for me, so so I'm digging it. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this to 85 points, and uh, yeah, and another solid one at sub 10 for me. All of the other wines were like kind of flat, right? And then you've got this thing, which is obviously the intensity is turned way up on it. And uh, but the flavors that are being provided aren't typically aren't, aren't very delicious to me at all. And I, I really have a hard time scoring it overall because I already don't like Zinfandel, right? And you've got that sort of caveat, like the nugget stuck in the brain. But the the, the rubber tire thing is tough. It's just. It's, it's there throughout the entire experience for me now. Um, and, and that could possibly be from the wines that we're coming from, because on the first taste, I didn't get that so much. Right. Right. But um, now it's like, yeah, you sort of get like in high, intense dry cherry flavors, um, plums, but man, just like, I'm, you know, licked a rubber tire, like a fresh tire. Like maybe I, I just ordered wine off just, the tire. I just ordered some scooter tires, you know, so I've been around the tires recently, but man, it's like that flavor is there the whole time. And so, um, I, I think, I think that this wine wouldn't, so a lot, a lot of people probably wouldn't get that in this sure. wine, but being as, being as, yeah, being as it's something that is like there throughout, I just can't sort of get around it. I mean, we're 80 points. For me, 78, probably leaning more towards, because it's just, I, I wouldn't want to drink it. So. Yeah, if you're a mechanic, don't go there, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so. <laughs> so. But, but it works well for me, and I think especially if you're, if you, yeah, if you like Zinfandel in general. It's worth trying. I mean, yeah, at, the, shot, at the price so. point, right, it's like, and I would say out, out of tasting through the lineup of the Smoking Loon stuff, it's, it's definitely the more intense, more easily accessible wines, wine of their uh, lineup, so... All right, so there we go, uh, four wines. Uh, that's that's the end of the show for this week. Uh, question of the day. I know we've hit on this before, but drinking a lot of budget wines, let us know what you've been excited about at the lower end of your uh, your price spectrum lately. Let it, let us in on what some good deals are.